Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at editing a full wedding inside of Lightroom from start to finish. So if you are working on improving your wedding editing photo workflow, or you're just starting to get into wedding photography, hopefully this tutorial can teach you some of the hard lessons I had to learn over time. A lot of mistakes made it used to take me days or weeks to finish a wedding. Now I can do it in a few hours. And so I'm going to show you how I do that. And hopefully this will help you do the same thing. So before we get started, I actually went through and called these photos already. So these are the selects, the photos that I kept. The rejects are in another folder that I put right here. And you can see that there's considerably more rejects than there are selects. So culling is literally going through. You can do this in Lightroom or Photo Mechanic like I do. And every time you see a photo that you actually want to keep, you just mark it with a one. Everything else you just assume is not going to be kept. And then you go through that a second time and narrow it down until you're left with far less photos and far better photos overall. This one's actually quite great. I think I'm going to keep it. So once I've got my photos selected, then what I do is I copy them over into this separate folder I made called selects. And I keep all of the selects in one folder, all of the rejects in another. That way, if I ever need to get a photo, let's say I um, get contacted by the bride and she says, hey, do you have a photo of Uncle Ned? The one that we have, his eyes are closed and I just didn't notice. Or I forgot to put Uncle Ned in there entirely. Well, then I have these photos to come back and grab later on. So I started off with 1,300 photos. And after all is said and done, I've made my way down to, let's see here, 500 and something. Just about 500. So I'm going to import them into Lightroom in a brand new catalog. I like to create a new catalog for every single couple. And I put everything from that wedding in one folder on my computer. So the folder has the couple's name. And then I have a Lightroom folder, the RAWs, which is now empty because I moved that into rejects and selects. So I have my RAWs, my Lightroom catalog, my exports will go in here as well. And then that way, if I ever need to move this onto a different hard drive, different computer, I can just grab it drag one folder over and I have everything I need. I'm not going to be missing any files, anything like that. So I've got my photos imported. I didn't worry about building any giant previews or smart previews because I'm going to actually apply a preset to these photos and then I'm going to have to regenerate the previews anyways, so it really wouldn't help me that much. So I'm going to go through and start editing. So my approach generally is to go through and find a preset that works on most of the photos, apply it to those photos, and then just go through and tweak them one at a time. So the idea is you start by making big, broad changes, such as subtle presets that affect the entire um, whole collection from all of the wedding day. And then you narrow in, you get more and more focused. You might edit groups of photos and then edit individual photos and then edit individual parts of each photo. So that I found is just the most efficient way to do it. We're gonna go through, I'm gonna grab a few photos just at random, go into the develop module by hitting the D key. And I have my signature edits um, minimalist clean wedding preset pack right in front of me. And that has been my new go-to for the last, oh, quite a while. You're going to see that these presets are not really working very well. Because this particular day, I was shooting at ISO 1600, and these presets were made for a more clean look. But basically, I go through, I figure out what profile seems to look the best on a bunch of different photos. So right now I'm liking three. I think that looks pretty good. And all of these presets are designed to be really clean. They're not meant to have a super extreme look. They just add a little bit of contrast. And then they've got a custom profile here. You'll see all of these sliders are zeroed out for the most part. I've adjusted some things like the yellow saturation down, purple saturation down a little bit. But the nice part is by having most of the effects on this slider, I can really dial in for each photo how much of that preset I want to have. So I'm going to go like that. We're going to add some denoise maybe, but we'll worry about that later. For now, I'm just going to copy everything I just did. Grab these settings and just see how it looks on a few other photos at random. So we'll grab this one, paste it on there. Wait for it to load eventually. Hello. You'll see not a massive difference, but it, it works. Try this one, that looks good. Try a few outside ones now. So you can see it just adds a little bit of pop, nothing super radical. It's keeping the colors very accurate. 
So if you want to check out these presets, they're actually available at shop.signatureedits.com. Pretty much everything I've learned from creating all of the presets I've made over the years to try and find something that just works every time. Like that was the main goal of these presets because I got so sick of presets that sometimes work and oftentimes didn't. And so I made these ones because I wanted something that I could just count on. So that looks pretty good. I'm thinking that's the preset I'm going to go with. So I'm going to sync these settings, not the crop, not the spot removal, not the local adjustments, anything like that. Everything else gets synchronized. I don't have to worry about white balance or exposure right now. Oh, actually, I really do because I adjusted it on that photo. Whoops. So let's just undo that. And we're going to sync again, but uncheck those. <laughs> now we're going to go to the top and get started. This is where the fun starts. Just going to go through. And each photo is going to get a little bit of attention. I'm going to clean up this window because it's got some weird gunk on it. And literally the main thing that I'm doing is I'm adjusting the white balance and I'm adjusting the exposure. Exposure I adjust with the plus and minus keys, white balance, obviously, with this slider here. If you get those two things lined up, any of your preset, dialed in nicely. Most of the time it's not going to need more than that. Here's before, here's after. So you can see I'm not going really hardcore with the changes, just adding a little bit of pop so that it has a nice finish and then maybe adjusting our crop so our lines are more straight up and down and cropping out things like my camera bag hiding in the corner of the shot. And that's it. That's my style and that's what my couples know to expect. So obviously if your website has a different style, well, <laughs> You're going to have to provide what you promise them. But overall, I found it's just so much better to aim for a more natural look. Just adding some saturation to his skin because it was a little bit washed out. Raise up the shadows here. And then I'm going to darken them back down on the parts of the image I don't really need them raised up on. Now, if you're wondering what this banding is about, it's probably just that the preset, not the preset, the uh, preview hasn't been totally generated by Lightroom yet. So I'd imagine when I zoom in, Lightroom's actually going to finish thinking. There you go, and you see it's actually not so weird and garbled. But again, we've got some smudges on the windows. We'll take care of those really quick. And Lightroom's going to suck and get it totally wrong. Let's try this again. I say this almost every tutorial. It blows my mind that with all of the advances Lightroom is making, <laughs> their spot removal tool does not seem to improve between updates. Like, look at that. That's just, just wonderful. So let's do it again. Okay, feather all the way up. That part is my bad, I will admit. And then set it to heal instead of clone and it should do a better job as well. Okay, moving on. It's the worst when you wind up doing something you think, you think it's going to be really quick, and then it winds up being this really involved thing. So instead of adding saturation to his skin, I've just made the white balance a little bit warmer and added some magenta, and that's going to add some color. So here's before and here's after, and I've also softened it up. So these presets that I'm using come with the preset pack as well. I am maybe going to add a little bit of saturation, though. We'll see. See what feels right. So all of these brush presets, which are right here. Or you can just pause the tutorial while I'm editing, copy them, and save them for yourself. The choice is yours. Okay, white balance dialed in, exposure up. In this case, it was in a closet with a super tungsten-y light, which is why the light feels so weird. I'm just going to do black and white feels a lot nicer when you have a bad lighting situation. And again, this feels pretty soft. It's because ISO 3200 was involved, so we're going to take our sharpening up a little bit and noise reduction up just a little as well. Sure. This might even look good in black and white. And since it's pretty soft, it'll lend itself better. 
So I'm going to roll with that. Good. Good. Look at that guy. Now, the only thing to be aware of that I missed, so I need to be more aware of it, is the fact that your eye is naturally drawn to the brightest part of the image. Now, his shirt, very bright. His head, very dark. In fact, there's a window right here, and he was taller than it. So we're just going to use a graduated filter here to brighten up the top of the image. And then we can darken everything down, and it's just going to feel a lot better. So here's before, and here's after. See, that makes a lot more sense, especially when we actually make him brighter. I'm taking the contrast down just so the light's not so harsh on his face. And if you take the contrast down, you can then add it up. Add it up. You can add some contrast to the overall image. Take the exposure down, and here's before, and here's after. So I think it's still maybe a little bit too contrasty. So we could dial back our preset a bit. I think, for me, that's going to be good enough for this particular shot. I can always come back and adjust it more later. So again, same thing. Here's before, here's after. So we just shifted the balance of the light so it's more towards him and less towards his shirt. As lovely a shirt as it is. So you'll find most of the time, once you get more familiar with Lightroom, it's less about doing super complicated editing and more about making just small changes that add up over time. So we're going to take our contrast down, take our blacks up because it's just looking pretty clipped, and maybe a little bit more saturation or some vibrance. I'm thinking the vibrance and then even a little saturation as well. Before, after. And I just copied those settings so then I can paste them on other shots in this scene. And it'll save me some time. Control C, Control V. Okay, and if you're thinking this looks really, really gross and grainy, kind of does, but when you zoom in, it's not so bad. Because Lightroom, for some reason, I can't figure out what I've done in my settings, but it just refuses to ever generate the full preview. And so you have to zoom in for it to actually do it. Now, if ever you're having an issue where things just weren't super sharp, I love the texture brush. That alone is worth upgrading to the newer versions of Lightroom if you don't have it in your current version. But it's still looking kind of just sloppy. Uh, let's just see, full screen, press F on your keyboard. Ah, uh, that looks okay. We could do a little bit of denoise, or I could switch it to black and white, or I could just roll with it as is. I generally like to use color if I can make color work, so I'm going to go down here and just add a little bit of noise reduction, and then this window, I'm going to soften stuff out of here because it's actually looking pretty harsh. So we'll go like that. We can even desaturate it a little bit. Moving on. Again, with our graduated filter. Now we kind of have some similar shots to this already. And we've got a major kind of loss of contrast going on up here. I don't know if I'm going to worry about this too much. You can see how helpful that graduated filter can be, though, in just shaping the light. Here's before, here's after. I definitely went too far, but if I go to black and white, it might look actually kind of cool, especially then if I grab radial filter, take the contrast down, shadows up a bit, even the highlights up, just to illuminate his face a little bit more. And I'm going to brush onto his shirt, kind of like that. And then I'm going to dial in, take my flow down a little bit on my eraser. Holding Alt will toggle to the eraser. And just shade in along his jawline a little bit. So here's before, here's after. And because I took it too far, we'll just dial back on the contrast a little bit. So, I mean, that's something. Is it better? Meh. 
could still probably use some work. Generally, take things until they look good and then dial it back by 20%. Is kind of what I found tends to be good because I naturally take things too far. Moving on. So there's a pattern here definitely on all of the indoor shots. I'm tending to add some saturation, add some vibrance, decrease the contrast. And that makes sense. There's just more contrast going on and it's low light. So fun fact for you, if you're shooting with high ISO in a low light situation, you're actually going to have less dynamic range in your photos. So your whites are going to seem much harsher. Your blacks are going to seem much blacker. So if you're ever having issues or just wondering like, oh, why didn't this work properly? The lighting should have been nice, but it's just super harsh. <laughs> That's probably why. Just going to add a graduated filter from the side because this side's darker than this one. That's going to brighten things up very slightly. Okay, this one, his has cropped. I don't really like it that much. And we got some other photos later, so I'm going to delete that one. There we go. So again, I can grab this shot. You know, I'm still not loving this. They're too dark up here. So I'm going to take my flow up. Okay. I'm going to copy this, except for the local adjustments. Paste it on here. And then just paint on their faces, the parts that are in shadow. Add a little bit of texture just to sharpen them up and drop the overall exposure. Graduated filter from the top. Okay, before, after. And again, when you zoom in, it's not going to be quite so grainy. This time, graduated filter from the side. Take our exposure down on this awesome guy. And I'm going to switch this to black and white. When it's not in focus, like this shot is not super sharp, I feel like black and white just kind of works. Love it, love it. Can't get enough of it. Okay, so I took a couple seconds on that shot. Now hopefully it's going to be as simple as just being able to copy paste. Now one other thing I could do here, grab a graduated filter, contrast way down. Shadows up a little bit, highlights down, and then darken everything. Do another graduated filter, an even bigger one. Contrast down, add a little exposure. So here's before and here's after. We've just kind of sculpted the light in on him. And then we might have taken the saturation slightly too far, so we'll dial it back. Okay, now this one, I was hoping I could rescue this text. Let's see. Reset. Take the texture up, dehaze, clarity, and it looks like, no, there's not a chance. But we're going to try it in black and white and see. Now, obviously, it's still not sharp, but I think because it's black and white, I can get away with it, especially if I crop out his sleeve, which is the only part that's in focus. Uh, I don't know. I think too sloppy. We're going to move on. Do the same thing here, graduated filter, contrast down, shadows up, highlights down a little bit. It's like a portable spotlight, put it on him, maybe even take the texture up a little bit. Darken everything down, oops, before, after. 
and do one more because he's still not bright enough. And this time I'm going to have the radio filter kind of up towards the window centered because it makes more sense that it would be brightest near to the window. So by doing that, I'm kind of simulating the natural light of the window. Right? And I should say, if this video has been helpful for you so far, if you could do me a favor and hit the like button, leave a comment below, it would mean a, a lot to me. To these, I'm just raising up the texture, maybe even a little DAs. Good, and then graduated filter just to make the middle brighter. I can darken everything down a little bit. Before, Apre. And I'm actually going to copy this one but this time copy the graduated filter and the radio filter. Speaking of which, could use one coming from this side because it looks like things are a little bit darker up top. Or we could go all the way, take the exposure way up, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down, and then make it a little bit more subtle. Hold on, wait for it. Like that. It's almost like there's some light from a window leaking in because there sort of was. We're going to really extend that transition out before, after. I took it too far, so dial it back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, we're just going to place some focus on the center here like that. I'm going to brush to just make sure that the ring gets our attention. And then I'm going to erase. So if I press O, I can see my mask. Take the flow of my eraser up a little bit. So again, good. So one mask before and after. Very nice, very nice. If you're wondering what lens this was taken with, it was literally just a 24-105 f4, the lens that came with the camera. So you can still get decent photos with the kit lens. Tools. Let's rotate this guy. Where are you? Photo. Rotate left. Okay, same thing once again. There's a trend here. Okay, so lowered the contrast in the middle. I can take the contrast up overall, brighten things up overall, before, after. And again, same thing. There's a couple specs on here I'll get rid of. Then those rings, unfortunately, are not super sharp, so we're going to have to take care of that. Some texture should help. A little bit of clarity, maybe. Dehaze, definitely not. <laughs> little sharpness, and I might even duplicate that. And dial those things back. Before, after. So we've added some sharpness to the rings. 
And then, because the rings are the main focus of this, I've already got a shot of those vowel books. I'm going to try and darken everything else down. So I'm just going to invert the mask by pressing the apostrophe key. Take the contrast down outside of that mask so that the exposure going down isn't quite so drastic. Texture down a little bit, clarity down a little bit, and we're actually going to take the noise and denoise a little bit. That'll soften everything before, after. Now that might have gone too far, and by might I mean I definitely went too far. So we're going to take our contrast down overall, highlights and our whites up a little bit, shadows up a little bit, before, after. Okay, now this dress shot, eh, not too fussy on it. I'm just going to delete it. This is better, but I think I have like 15 dress shots, so I'm just going to take the one I like the most. Uh, this one I actually like. Let's zoom in so that we can see it without that stupid banding. Thank you, Lightroom. And overall, at, I'm kind of feeling like the grain is quite high on all of these shots. So I'm going to go down here to my grain settings, which is in effect somewhere. Wait for it. You can do it, Ryan. And I'm going to take the size down a little bit and the amount down to, say, 20 instead of 35. Let's toggle it on and off. Probably don't even need that much. Let's try it like that. Very subtle. Very subtle indeed. And I'm going to sync everything. And by that I mean all of these images and just the green. Okay, that's much cleaner. Mm, this one, the only thing that I really do want to do is take care of kind of the clipping and harshness going on by the window. So I'm going to grab a radial filter. I'm going to go down here to my skin softener or even I have a sun flare brush in here. And you'll see that's way too much, but we'll dial it back so it's not adding so much color. And basically in this situation, I'm just using it to kind of blow out this window a little bit. Give it more of a dreamy quality rather than like a super digital clipped quality. And we can dial it back. So that's a little trick a lot of people don't know. You can actually collapse this panel here. Then you get a slider and can adjust and bring everything back. So here's before that and after. And then, if I was really taking my time on this image, I would go on to this staircase here and just brighten up the shadows slightly so I'm not super, super clipping everything. That's not even a word. Super clip. Okay. Another thing that you could do if you really wanted to go all out is just add some light from up top. Overall, it's going to make it feel a lot more natural than if the ceiling is just dark for some reason. Because we're used to light coming from above. Now, I feel so bad without having that preview properly rendered. There we go. Now, before, after. Okay, same kind of thing. I'm actually going to go back to this photo, check none. We're going to copy the radial filter. And that way I can paste it and move it into the same window. Like that. And definitely dial it back even more. And sometimes that slider doesn't work. So there you go, Lightroom. You're just crushing it. Again, we've got so many similar dress shots. I think I'm actually going to get rid of this one. And then I think there's two of these, right? Nope, just the one. So that's fine. Looks pretty good. I am going to take a brush and just brighten the dress slightly and this area of the wall. Good. And we've got this weird kind of chimney from another house next door that's distracting. So we could try and get rid of it. It's not going to be perfect, but 
think it's less distracting than it was before. Here's before. Here's after. Uh, questionable. Try and take our size up to the right spot. Come on. You know, sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to go. Okay. Very nice, very nice. I'm just going to brush on the shoes here, add a little bit of highlight, a little bit of pop. See so your eyes get drawn to them a little more. Again, same thing. We're going to brighten up these flowers. Shoe number one, shoe number two, before, after. So it's just little things, right? Like you're not doing any extreme edits, but you're just kind of shape, shaping the light, subtly bringing out things that are more important and adding dimension and texture by brightening some areas and leaving other areas darker. Before, after. And with this one, I first off, I'm going to get rid of that dust because it's very annoying. And then I can take my shadows down a little bit, even my blacks down a little. Good. Same thing. Now, would I necessarily do this on every image? Of course not. But I think it's just a really interesting way to show the point that these subtle little changes can really add up and make a big difference. So first to do that, then we take our shadows down, blacks down, before, after. This one's kind of interesting. Her expression's not awesome. It's kind of like an interesting shot. And I'm just going to keep it because it's one hair shot. I didn't take too many others. Contrast down. Highlights down a little bit. And if you ever want to whiten teeth, easiest way is you can brighten them, but also you can take the white balance down. Here's before, here's after. Now, I always make sure to get a shot of the back of the hair when it's freshly done because that's the one part that the bride is not going to be able to see at all except for in her photos. So you want to make sure you capture that if you can. So this one I'm actually intentionally blowing out the background because it definitely doesn't help having it in there unless we like majorly dial back on the contrast. We could try like that before, after. Copy all of that.
I was just thinking, I edited this picture two seconds ago, but actually it's just because now the bride's in it. Now I'm going to darken down this wall a little. Fun fact, if you hold down shift and then scroll up or down, you can adjust the feather. Then you hold down shift again between two points, and Lightroom will draw a perfectly straight line. So if you ever need to do a straight line on something like a wall, that's how you can do it. Anyways, reset that, take our exposure down, contrast and texture down, before, after. Just adds a little bit of dimension, and then, overall, can reset that, contrast down, highlights down, texture clarity down. Just make it less harsh out of that window. And of course, it would be much better if my mask hadn't been so sloppy. There you go. Before, after. And I'm spending my time getting this one right because there's going to be a sequence of these and it's just easier to dial it all in. Same thing, brighten up our beautiful bride. And we're gonna deal with this window. Darken everything down. It just seems a little bit more romantic, a little bit more dreamy, mysterious, dramatic. Before after. See how we've just focused our viewer in to this spot. Now our face is in shadow, so we're definitely going to fix that. And we're going to extend that down to her arm as well. Okay. Before, after. Now I might have taken this one a little bit too far. I think I'm going to dial back one of these graduated filters slightly. There. Before, after. Now, one last thing. I am going to just take a brush here and try and get a little bit more sharp get a little bit more sharpness on their faces without introducing too much noise okay looking pretty good Love this shot. I think it's super pretty.
confident. just me or does this door look like it's glowing in this one spot super weird Blend it then. Like that. Good, and then this area under the armpit. It's one of the things with uh, dresses is oftentimes they can just bunch up and kind of look in a little bit unflattering. So if I had two shots to choose from, I'd try and find one that didn't have that happening, but because it's only this shot I've got to work with, I'm gonna keep it in there. Contrast way down, exposure way down. We might even do black and white. just because the light is. Come from the side, you just gotta be careful of it bringing out every single pore. So go to air, skin soften brush. the feeling like I might need to keep that in color oh hello don't want that so let's just undo copy these settings Let's do this one in black and white. A 
This one we'll try in color. That's not super flattering, so we're just going to get rid of that one. Cool, we are getting closer, people. Much closer. Now, since I raised up the shadows to try and Bring out everybody in the room. We're just going to darken down the rest of the room a little bit. Good. You can only push it so far. Here's before, here's after. Gonna invert this mask, darken everything down, call it a day. Before, after. This one just looks a little bit yellow, so we'll cool it down a little bit. And then the highlights look a little out of control up here. And again, remember, eyes are drawn to the brightest part of the image. So brighten everything else down, and bam, things make more sense. Man, love the colors from this day. Part of it's the camera, part of it's the light. Preset does a little bit. But overcast, man, heavy clouds, nothing better. See what a big difference the white balance makes? Here versus here. And then a couple of things. First, we can darken down the rest of that hallway. Next, we can hopefully get rid of these stupid things. Now, here's the funny thing. There's no way that this is that color. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit closer. Try heal, see if Lightroom does any better. Sure. Just makes very little sense. Oh well. Lightroom, if you're watching this, please, please, please fix that. Anyways, moving on. I love this photo of the flowers. Ah, flowers with nice, dreamy, shadowy light. Best thing ever. Right? Like, look at that. Unreal. Before, after. Okay, this just looks a little bit cool. We'll warm it up. Now, the light is definitely cooler here than it is on her face, and it's darker here on her face, so we'll brighten everything up around this area. And we'll 
cool it down a little bit and then warm up the whole photo. So we're just evening out the light a little. Lower the exposure, bring our contrast down a bit. Something like that before, after. And we could even grab a graduated filter on the top. Just add a touch more exposure. Okay. Honestly, not loving this shot. I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, now comes the fun stuff. Outdoors. So, the brush I use more than any other brush is literally just contrast down all the way. Maybe exposure up a little bit. Look at that. Before. After. Bam. Love these presets. Love that brush. I love it. I'm loving it. Okay. Let's actually restart here. We're going to take our contrast down, whites up a little bit, and exposure up a little bit. Now this will be my default every time I actually open up the radial filter. I won't have to do that every time. Okay, contrast up. And I'm going to do another brush, brighten him even more. Before, after. I like that, except for the yellows, not a big fan, so we'll desaturate them a little bit. Okay. Copy that. Paste that. Now it does suck. I cropped a little bit too far. Just missed his head. Once you get that preset dialed in and your lighting is reasonably consistent between photos, it becomes so much faster to edit. And it's especially easy on days like today when you've got really nice overcast skies. I actually like the background, nice and dark like that. Obviously, his face and her, not bright enough, so we're just going to do a couple of radio filters. We can maybe even back off on the contrast a little bit and darken it down. Do one of those. Let's try that again, just a little bit neater. I don't actually need to do under his chin. That'll just give him more separation in his jawline naturally anyways by doing that. Everybody wins. She looks super happy, as she should be.
just taking a second to get this more dialed in because I'm not loving how it's feeling. The colors of these bushes in behind. So that's what I'm doing. Just adjusting for that. And then I'm going to brighten him up because he's way too dark. And even crop in so we're a little more focused on her. Good. Before. Apre. it and again quick little draw on both of them dial it back so it's subtle and then I can darken everything else down I'm just going to go over this side of the photo because it actually looks like it's lost a little bit of its luster. So I'm just going to add the highlights back in there. I think maybe on this rock too. Selectively up here. Shape the light before, after. And her flowers could be a little bit darker. This last week could recover some of those highlights. then I should be able to just copy everything here and it'll roughly work. Now are they in focus? Uh, just about, but not quite sharp enough. So we'll grab our brush here. We'll do our best to, there we go, that's better. Fix this one while we're at it. Try this again. Everything looks good. They're just a little bit too contrasty, so I'm going to grab that trusty contrast slider, bring it down. Make this screen a little bigger. Something like that. Looks pretty good. Before, after. So as you can see while I'm going through this, I'm not like making massive changes to every single photo, but I am taking the time to dial pretty much every single one in. And here's a tip for you. If you ever take the exposure down, make sure you add some highlights and some whites back in. That'll make it feel a little bit more natural because it'll darken down everything but by adding those highlights and those whites back in um, your shadows will get darker and your midtones will get darker but your highlights will be preserved and it'll just feel less like you artificially darken things down now 
this could maybe be black and white. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. this, he's entirely out of focus, so is she. We've got what looks like a raindrop or something <laughs> that was just falling perfectly in line right there. So I'm going to brush onto them first and foremost, add some texture, add a little bit of sharpness, and then switch it over to black and white and probably make these flowers less sharp. so that it's not so obvious that I missed focus before, after. And also those flowers are too bright. Super pretty. Now, if I wanted to, these photos would be really, really beautiful with some color grading on them. So you could mess around with our midtones and our shadows and, you know, add some warmth in there. Make it super fall. But I'm just feeling like keeping it a little bit more natural. So that's what I'm going to do, dear person. Good, and then I'm going to desaturate our yellows here a little bit more. Good. Before, after. Copy all that. Here, I'm just going to lower the contrast just in her eyes because they're looking a little bit too dark. It's funny how even on a super cloudy day, if it's around noon, you're still going to get bags under the eyes that need fixing. And sometimes if the clouds are too high, and they're not super thick, you get light that is even more harsh than if it were sunny. So at least on a sunny day, you have like some flares and you lose some contrast that way. I don't exactly know why, but oftentimes I find if it's a high cloudy day, not like super rainy day, but just, you know, overcast, it winds up being so much worse than if it were sunny. Maybe that's because when it's sunny, you can see the light and you can kind of plan around it. You can face them away from the sun and, you know, but when you can't see the light, it shows up on your camera and you're like, oh shoot, this is very unfortunate. So I'm grateful I'm not dealing with that today.
This one's kind of tricky. Somewhere around there. Because this is actually the start of the show. This is the part of photo we want to focus on. But they're kind of not in focus, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off. Here's before, here's after. We've kind of placed a little bit more focus on them, but still not quite enough. Oops. I'm going to try just taking our texture down and our clarity down. Over here. And not helpful. Not helpful at all. No. I'm just not feeling it. Like, it's kind of cool, but maybe if we crop in even further. But then it's out of focus. So, you got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. And this is one of those fold them cases. Okay, this is a classic case of something ain't right here. So we're just going to reset all of our brushes. And make a new one. Brighten things up here in the middle. Good. Darken the whole image down. Darken it down some more. Then add some contrast to the whole image. Before, after. And I think I went a little bit too far with warming it up. So we'll dial that back a little bit. I just don't like the yellow of these particular plants. Because of these trees over here, I can't get away with doing such an extreme effect. So I'll dial it back. And it also looks like this is a different color. I don't know. It's super weird. So we'll try and even it out like that. And we'll cool everything off. And I'm not feeling it. I don't know why. 
I just don't like it. So I'm going to switch to black and white. It's going to be beautiful. And that'll be that. Why fight it when black and white is the best? Good. Mm, maybe a little bit more vibrance. Okay, so in this one, just going to target a couple of areas here that are slightly clipped. Her flowers. Then... We're going to attempt to darken everything down around them. So we're going to take our exposure, take it way down. Do one of these. Texture down, clarity down, dehaze down. Dial it all back a little bit. Before, after. Then we can darken everything. I don't know, those flowers, man. They're still just way too bright. So we'll take the exposure down on them. Okay, that's better. And then I'm going to go over here because I darkened everything down and it looks kind of weird. What I'm going to try is just taking my highlights up, my whites up on those areas, shadows down, exposure down. And that'll add some pop back in there. And lastly, our couple doesn't look super sharp, do they? So we'll add some texture. Beautiful. It's kind of funny when you think about it. It's like somebody said to themselves, you know what would be the best color for us to make a dress let's make it white so that no matter what kind of weather you're working with no matter what the lighting is it's always going to be overexposed no matter what that would be a good idea and that's what happened i'm sure of it okay this is nice we're gonna take a brush here onto her skin and just smooth that out And I'm just following the areas of highlight. Basically just enhancing her contouring, really. It'll blend better. Good. And then I'm going to grab my flow, take it down, and go over the rest to blend it in. So here's before and here's after. And then I can go over again with a brush but this time on the areas that I want to sharpen. We'll add a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity, a little bit of sharpness, make sure our flow's up. Else we won't get much done. Like that. Before, after. And then this is definitely the focal point of the image. So we want to make sure it's the brightest part. So those flowers, once again, too bright. We'll make sure they're a little darker. And then we'll just take a, one last little mask. Brighten up this area. Before, after. Did I take it too far? Probably. What should we do? Hmm. Dial that back a little. Sure. Okay, 
that, my dear friends, does not look great. You know what? Her neck area is too dark. Don't they just look like the cutest couple ever there? I love it. I'm loving it. White balance and exposure, man. Small little differences. Small little changes, such a big difference. Took that a little too far.
You can tell the clouds are parting here because the light is suddenly so much more harsh than it was just a couple photos ago. Okay, okay, okay. His eyes are kind of half closed in this photo, so I'm going to get rid of this one. I don't know how she wound up not in focus. They're like exactly beside each other. Now I'm going to crop in here just because it's more flattering if he takes up more room in the actual framing of the photo. It has nothing to do with the size of either of them. It just naturally feels better.
Okay, so I'm taking the exposure down outside, but I'm also raising up the highlights. So here's before and here's after. Smooth out the skin again here. thinking this one's going to look really cool in black and white. So let's go for it. Dial our contrast way back. Brighten up her face just a little more. Here. Before, after. Definitely went too far on the smoothing of the skin. So let's just dial all of that back. Hmm, something feels off still. Probably that. Do I like it? I don't know. I'm going to leave it for now. I might delete it later. This one I love. I think it's going to be really great in black and white. So I'm just going to roll with it. Going to smooth out the texture here.
I'm just adding a little bit of shading under his jaw just to accentuate his jawline. So here's the thing. Yes, we all know that the bride is the big deal we focus on when we're editing these pictures, but the guy wants to look great too. So I'm going to do my best to make that happen. I'm going to make his eyebrows a little bit thicker like that. Eyelashes. Facial hair. like that. Before, after. I'm not going to worry about smoothing his skin out the same way I would with the bride. Love it. Love it. Okay, now the one thing that I do want to make sure I do, I think I can really bring out these greens a little bit more. I have a smidge of dehaze. Before, after. Pretty nice. Oh, well, that's not the same. Come on. Copy exposure. There we go. Same thing, we're gonna just grab a smidge of de haze. Mm. 
This is very distracting. But I don't think the spot removal tool is going to be my friend today. We'll see. Oh, yeah. That sounds beautiful. Just beautiful, Ryan. Okay, so weird branchy thing stays in there. Or we crop in. I'm on team crop today. Good. Everything sharp, yeah. Looks like I got some dust in the lens, or more likely those are raindrops. But we'll just get rid of the ones that are like right there. Mm-hmm. Oh. That one's really annoying. Okay. Moving on. Hello, little bug. I could go black and white for one of these. Might be kind of interesting. See, when you saw that, you thought it was kind of rough. But once it comes around, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Love this shot. I think it's super cute. This one might actually be cool in black and white. Definitely I'm gonna wanna have it slightly skinnier aspect ratio. Good. I'm just going to sharpen them up a little bit. Okay. Hey, don't know why. Don't like the way this one feels. Color just feels off, so I'm going to put it in black and white. And this side, I'm going to add a graduated filter. Can't put my finger on it. Something just feels off.
perfection. Don't you love it when it just works? Once in a while that happens. Let's zoom in, make sure they're nice and sharp. Yes, they are. This one, I'm going to change the aspect ratio to something slightly wider. It's kind of interesting. My S5, which is the camera this was shot on, I guess was shooting 1610. Nope, 4.3. I don't know, but it's a very wide aspect ratio compared to my GH5. It's his eyes closed here. They are. Goodbye. Now this one, they're off to the side and I actually kind of like it. It's something interesting. They're not like in the middle like every other photo. So I'm going to keep it there. I might even accentuate it a little bit further. that. They're kind of balanced off by this tree. Look at those colors though. I mean, mm, 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 mm. And it's a combination. It's the light, it's the preset. It's the fiddling I did with it. It's the adjustment layers. So many people buy presets, and I did this too when I was starting out. I was like, okay, so I want to get my photos to look like this photo shoot because I found a really cool photo shoot online, right? What presets are they using? Because you just assume if you use the same presets, you're going to get the same edits. And that's just not how it works. You buy the presets, you put them on your photos, and you're like, these look nothing alike. Not realizing that so much of the way those presets wound up working is because of the type of camera because of the type of lens, because of the lighting conditions. Most of it's the light and what's going on in camera. That's going to make the biggest difference from one photo to another. And often, like the biggest mistake that I myself made, and now I see other people making, and I still make, is shooting at the wrong time of day and just not having the right light in their photos. Because trying to rescue a photo with bad light just doesn't work. It doesn't matter how good your presets are, they're not going to make it look like the photos were taken at a nice time of day. So what do you do? You buy a rain machine and you rain dance before every shoot. And <laughs> I don't know. You just need to schedule your shoots when you can. The sunset shoot if you're doing a live event and can control part of it by saying, hey, we're going to do your photo shoot when we do your photo shoot. But if we can... Let's do a few photos at sunset, and that will get you those really nice lit shots. Also, when it comes to actually arriving in the morning, taking those prep photos, whatever, anytime that you're in a situation where you're shooting on location, take control of that situation. Move stuff around, change the light, move people around. You're there because people trust you to do the best you can. And so they want to help you support. They want to support you in that. And so the first thing I do when I get there in the morning is I shut off every light in the house because that mixed tungsten light is going to be the worst. If you have windows, that's always going to be better. This is beautiful, but I think mm, maybe black and white. I don't know. Color's so nice. Let's leave it for now. Anyways, that's the first thing I do every single time. Shut off the lights. Now, 
and then I'll move things around. So if the bride's doing makeup in a really horrible spot, which often happens, I don't get it, but for some reason, sometimes makeup artists choose a really not great spot for photos. And so at the end, I'll say, hey, can we just do the final touch-ups over here? Take them by a nice window, and life is much better. Okay, this photo I really like. They're doing a nice spin. I think if I zoom in, it's in focus. Yes. Stupid Lightroom and its previews. So what am I going to do? I could keep it in color. We got some weird stuff going on with this tree being like hyper shadowed. So we're going to fix that. Like that. Same with this one. Then I think we could add some texture overall to the whole shot. You could do it in black and white. I'm going to leave it. I'm feeling color. I'm going to copy my brush. Just it's so funny because this photo shoot was like 20 minutes long and so I was just like quick as I can go here go there go everywhere okay 20 minutes is exaggerating we probably did have half an hour but it was rushed and so I'm just you can't tell but there's a car right here and this was like just outside of the parking lot pretty much this whole shoot it's a nice lookout spot, but you have to just be really strategic in the way that you use the angles that you've got. Position people in front of stuff that's going to be distracting. Like said cars. This is again looking over the parking lot. This is an overflow parking zone. Okay, let's see if this shot actually winds up looking cool. Yeah, I'm sort of digging it. You can see down the valley over here. Might warm it up a little. And then take our garçon, make him a little bit less shadowy. Nice. Let's roll. We'll do this in black and white. Okay, what's going on here? We got some major white balance issues. Things are super contrasty. You can do it, Ryan. You can do it. Focus. Okay. First off, let's take some contrast off of our beautiful couple. Like that. We can darken down the background, see what a difference that makes. One, two. And I think that'll be closer. Might take our contrast down more on the overall image. Add a little bit of dehaze, maybe. Blacks up. Okay. I'm going to stick with somewhere around there for now. 
In my second pass, I'm probably going to come back and be like, this looks horrible. What were you thinking? You stupid dumb. Oh, that's kind of nice. I don't really like the shadows, the way they're feeling, though. It's unnatural. Okay, we're going to roll with this. This, I think, black and white is going to be really nice. Yes. Heck to the yes. Looks pretty good. This one just not digging, so I'm going to delete it. It's nice when you have lots of options and then you don't have to be so... Oh, what's the word? Desperate to keep every photo. When you have lots, you can afford to delete a few. Life is still good. Looks like we got a lot of saturation going on in... Maybe it's the oranges. Yeah, not much we can do about that without making the skin look weird. So we'll leave that as is. This one could be color or black and white. I think black and white. All right. And then, then he was done the photo shoot. Onward, my friends. Onward and upward. So if you're ever wondering whether you should add vibrance or saturation to an image, vibrance is going to take up all the colors, but it's going to take up more of the colors that are not related to skin tones. So it's going to mostly raise the blues, the greens, uh, some of the yellows, the purples, with the magentas, but it's going to raise the oranges and the yellows and reds less than everything else. Whereas saturation is going to raise all the colors equally. So if you want to just add pop without affecting the skin tone so much, vibrance. If you want to add more color to the whole image, saturation. 
And if you want to fix this weird skin cast, adjust your white balance. Mm. Take our highlights down, contrast up a little bit. So in this case, if I want to add more pop to the rest of the image, vibrance, a little bit more color, including in her skin tones, saturation. All right, so now that we've gotten to the main ceremony, I'm going to take a few seconds just to get these colors right. So first thing I'm going to do is just adjust the white balance, obviously, to warm it up to kind of a point that looks good. That looks pretty nice. Now, we're maybe a little bit high in the contrast, like we're clipping things pretty bad. So we could try raising our black point and then lowering our exposure overall. And then our yellows and our greens is the next thing I'm going to want to tackle. So I might take away a little saturation in the yellows. And then take our greens and grab the hue and just grab that, take it up towards kind of a bluish tone. The reason I'm doing that is I feel like it's just is a little bit less muddy when I do it that way. So just a little bit. And then I'm going to take the saturation in the greens and turn them up. And now I can see, okay, I still need to play with that tone a little bit more. Probably take it up to around here. And then saturation back down. Even take the luminance down. So oftentimes, if you want to add more pop and more color to the green, it's not just a matter of grabbing the saturation and taking it down, it's taking the luminance down as well. So here's before, here's after. It's maybe looking a little bit too warm. So I could dial that back just a little, maybe a little bit more magenta, somewhere around there. So now I can grab this preset and apply it to everything. All right, all right. So that's the thing with presets. You can see the original preset looks all right, um, but it just takes that extra couple of seconds. All I have to do, I went down, I took the luminance of the greens down a little bit more, I added some saturation back into the greens because they're just a little too desaturated. And then the hue of the greens take it a little bit more towards blue. And then I can warm up the whole image without the greens looking too blue. Okay, that does not look so good. I think that's because this is with the GH5. So different cameras are going to require some different approaches. Somewhere around there looks okay-ish. Does not look great. Let's go back, copy these settings. So small little changes, but they add up. And I think that's the biggest difference is as you get better with Lightroom, you just get better at predicting what changes are needed because it's never exactly the same for every image. Sometimes it's a combination of you need to take the contrast down and the exposure down. Or with this one, we're still looking too cold, so I'm going to warm it up. I'm going to darken everything down. I 
And I think really it's because this part of the image is so much brighter than this one. So I'm just going to take a graduated filter. And we'll brighten everything up on that side, then darken everything down. And that'll make it feel a lot more balanced. It's probably a little bit far. So I'll dial that back slightly. If I can find where my graduated filter went. Let's just reset it. And do it again. Before, after. Good, good. I think those greens are now a little bit too much towards blue, so we'll take that back. I think in black and white for this one, because I'm not really loving the color. And then just the way that her arm is sitting here isn't super flattering. So I could crop in like that. But then I think probably this photo just isn't as flattering as it could have been. So I'm going to remove it. good. Now this one, obviously we've got way less contrast in the bottom here because I was using a prism. So I'm just going to reduce the contrast on the top so we're not quite so far out. Like that. Just blazing through. Okay, so this one, start with the exposure. I'm thinking I'm going to brighten up our couple so I can darken everything down a little. Sure. Take our highlights back up. And then use our spot removal tool to get rid of that weirdo. Good. Before, after. going to brighten up the biggest shadows on his face and then I can add some contrast to everything so like that and I'm going to take the saturation down which is going to desaturate everything and take the vibrance up and that'll add some color back into primarily the blues and the greens and I might actually Just get that one little spot. Okay. Just gonna take the highlights down on her face. Perfect. And it will take two seconds to just add a little shadow under her chin. And I'll give it just a little bit more definition, see? Before, after.
just want it to have a little bit more punch without looking too contrasty, which is sort of liking two opposite, going for two opposite things at the same time. You want it to be punchy, but you don't want it to look too edited. Fine line to walk. Okay. It's looking okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I actually like it better at an angle like that. And they still feel too dark, so I'm just going to brighten up these couple of areas. Not too shabby. Maybe take our contrast down a little. Okay. Moving on. Now this doesn't make sense. We've got a kiss out of order from the ring. So obviously my photos aren't perfectly synced. I'm going to have to fix that later. Switching back and forth, I'm also noticing this white balance is just not quite right. Okay, let's try this again. Grab this shot, and I'm just going to grab the settings from this shot because it was taken with the same camera, so it should maybe be a better starting point. Yeah, okay. Contrast up a little. Take the shadows way up. And I'll just brighten this area a little bit. And finally, add a little sharpness on that ring. So it really pops. Hello. Something like that. Okay. Moving on, moving on. Their skin is looking pretty red to me, so I'm going to try and tweak that, desaturate it a little bit, darken everything down, and then brighten up our groom here. few weird spots in the lens or something, so we'll just fix those. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Try and get this white balance right. That's feeling a little better. Before and after. I think that's a little bit too far. There. Still might need to dial those shadows back. There's nothing worse than when it just looks like it's been pushed too far and the shadows start feeling kind of fake. So if you are trying to brighten something up, what I normally start by doing is just lowering the contrast. And if that still needs some extra help, then I'll raise the highlights and the whites before I'll raise the exposure or the shadows. That way you're brightening things up in a more natural way. So in this one, I'm just going to darken things down on this side so the light is a little bit more even. Love this moment. Just gonna crop out, <laughs> get rid of that magical mystery hand. kind of interesting typically if you actually are watching these closely you're going to see that the bride's skin tone is a lot warmer than the groom's and I was thinking about this like why is that and I just realized the reason is because the groom is wearing a blue suit so the light is actually hitting his suit reflecting up onto his face now in the photos where they're facing each other when we look my guess is it's going to be the opposite because she's facing his blue suit, probably her face will tend to be cooler. So I'm just, again, enhancing the jawline a little bit. Before, after. And we might clean up the skin, too. Really quick, up here on the forehead. Because the rest of this image really doesn't add to the moment, I'm going to try and just bring a little bit more focus onto the center here. I'm going to use this brush called, where are you? Brooding Dehaze Darken. Invert it with the apostrophe key. Now that's just going to kind of take the focus off everything else going on in that moment and make sure we're really just looking here into the middle.
Same thing here. Before, after. So we're just shifting the direction that the eye is really drawn to. You can see the reflection because I took this through a window. Okay, so now we're high ISO because we're inside. So I'm just going to do some denoise on here. In general, I like to leave the denoise off of my photos until the end or until I know I absolutely need it. And the reason is that if you add denoise to your photos, it slows down Lightroom a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Okay, and I lost my changes to the grass here. Let's just back up, copy this one. Go back down to our family photos. Oops. And proceed. Come on. There we go. Much better. Maybe be a little bit warmer, and the grass could be slightly less blue, and maybe a little less saturated. Just going through, taking the contrast down on each of their faces. Just because the light is a little bit harsh. And we'll soften it out. And then I'm going through on pretty much every photo and taking the exposure down on this. Okay. Because we don't want it to just explode and draw our eyes because it's the brightest thing out there.
rinse and repeat. The nice part is I don't have to be super careful about how closely I'm brushing because all I'm doing is taking the contrast and the highlights down on that brush. And because we got this nice white sky in behind, you really can't see the brush marks. That's one thing that drives me absolutely nuts is if I can see the brush marks in an edited photo. So I try to avoid it by just doing more um, natural brushes. The less extreme your effects are, the more transparent they're going to be. Which is why I always advise, instead of trying to get it done in one brush, go over it a couple of times with a few different brushes, and then that way you can blend it as you go. This one out of focus? Nope, Lightroom is just taking its sweet time. Pavement down here is very bright, so I'm just darkening it. And then our flowers. And our customary fix the face. take the saturation down just a bit in this one because she's wearing such a blue saturated dress and something about his suit just feels a little weird the way it's catching the light I think it's missing a little contrast we're just going to take the shadows down And same thing here. Make sure his eyes are in focus. It kind of looks like our groom, for whatever reason, was a little bit further behind. So I'm just going to sharpen them up. Something like that. Mm -hmm.
So it's funny. You see this photo. Look weird. Feels weird. But if we just darken down the exposure a little bit, it'll feel much more natural. So oftentimes it really is that simple. And then just taking that brush to bring the contrast down on the face. Then we get pop in the rest of the image without making the face look just way too harsh. I'm actually going to add some highlights back in. Okay. And then they were indoors. Now I think at this point we're reaching the indoor photos where I'm going to be able to put some noise reduction on here. So let's do that. Honestly, you want as little as you can get away with, so I'm going to leave it around 17. If I need more, I will add it. Okay, so this one, you can see there's quite a bit of noise. So we'll go down and add a little bit more noise reduction. And then they were back outside. His brief respite was not to be. It always happens. In older versions of Lightroom, back in the old days, you used to be able to just double click on an image in the grid and then that would take you into that image in the develop module. Well, not anymore, dear folks. Now it takes you straight over to the loop view and you have to click D to go into the develop module. Kind of inconvenient. Okay, so things are feeling too cool, but if I warm it up, the skin tones feel weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool down the skin tones so they look kind of like blue grapes just masking on there really briefly okay and then theoretically if I warm up everything now the skin tones should feel normal while the background is warmer is it great? Nah, still not sure if I like it that much probably too far so we'll dial it back a bit heck let's even see what happens when we set the white balance to auto we're pretty close Okay, one of the things when you're editing for a long time too is you got to make sure that you don't get lost in your own eyes adjusting and lying to you. That happens all the time to me. You think something looks good, you come back the next day, you're like, oh my gosh. Because over time, you're like, oh, that looks normal, and in fact, it does not. Hopefully, I'm not doing that right now as we speak. have decided to, to, to. beautiful this was the best man and maid of honor personal opinion. Wedding dresses should have color, like this. Pops so much better. Doesn't wash everything out. Okay, so now we're ISO 10,000. We're really going to need some noise reduction. Let's just zoom in here, make sure we have the appropriate amount. Probably around there. Then we want to keep our detail up, because I want to keep things nice and sharp. Contrast up a little bit. I do have a full video on noise reduction. If you're wondering what those sliders actually mean and do, that video kind of covers it. So, But short answer, there is no easy answer. <laughs> this is just the amount of overall detail is attempting to preserve detail at the expense of the noise reduction not being quite so clean. 
And contrast, is it attempting to preserve contrast? I should really be paying attention to what I'm doing now. There we go. I don't know why. I just like this shot. One lonely man in the middle of a crowded room. So we could raise our highlights, drop everything. I think black and white might be kind of cool. Mm, nah. Leave it there. It's nice when the light is consistent. You can just breeze through it. Hasn't really been a super common thing so far this wedding. Okay, so we're going to have to put some sharpness on here, some noise reduction, and some texture to try and sharpen it up. I'm going to darken everything down so it appears more sharp than it was. Here's before, here's after. Lots of noise up in here. It's funny though, the noise honestly doesn't look that bad because it's kind of a nice grain to it. Whereas if I take it further up and have more noise reduction, I think it actually makes it worse instead of better. So we're just going to roll with it and then make sure that we've got our grain turned off for these shots. Now this, perfect, should go away when we zoom in. So with shots like this one, where they were very much in the shadow, I'm not going to try and ex brighten it up so that they look like they're well exposed, because they weren't. It'll actually feel more natural like this, and obviously I don't have the ability to brighten it that much anyways with these particular photos shot at high eyes, so. What I might do though, a little bit of a brush just on him to brighten his face up.
Now her dress, just a little bit blown out, so we'll rescue that. Same thing here. Now we've already got some that are pretty similar to this one shot, so I'm just going to do this one in black and white, I think. Which will also allow me to push the shadows a little bit harder here. Although that feels unnatural, so let's try it with the brush instead. Just brighten that part of the image. There. Before and after. Good. And we could go the extra mile, brighten up our guests in the background a little bit. little selective sharpening on these ones honestly this one this photo is really really grainy really kind of not in focus so I think I'm actually gonna just put this one in black and white there we go you know what they say black and white covers up a multitude of sins So in each shot, I have to darken the dress down and also raise the white balance a little bit, at least in this one, because since she's nearer to the window, the color temperature is actually cooler out there, whereas up here, the, the chandelier is applying some light, warming things up, and probably there's light bouncing around on these kind of cream-colored walls, warming up that light too, and that's what's hitting these people. So that's why the bride is cooler. Okay, and then they were outside. And go back to our trusty outside preset, somewhere up here. Oh, that does not look good. That's what happens when your eyes get a break. Sometimes you see, oh, shoot. <laughs> Could have done that better. So we'll add some saturation there. Take it away overall. 
roll with that. And adjust the photos on either side. Okay. Then I'm going to copy this preset. Some nice camera dust or something I missed the first time around. Or actually, they're more likely raindrops. Yep, raindrops. Anyways, so we'll go back to our grid, down to where we were. We're getting close, people. Very, very close. It's a good feeling. Interesting. When you zoom in, you realize, oh, they're not really in focus. So let's just try and sharpen that up. Good. There it is. All right, a little bit dark. One thing, if you ever have someone whose hair is thinning at the top, you can actually just increase the contrast and lower the shadows, and oftentimes that'll help thicken it up. Won't make it go away, but it's just slightly less. Give it a shot. And this one, for whatever reason, their skin just looks really red. So I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit in the reds and then over towards orange or green. Good.
I think this one's going to be better in black and white. Yeah. So you can see, since this was taken with a different camera, there's just not as much latitude or room to adjust things in here. I think it's because the luminance is down on the greens. It's feeling weird. So we're going to take that back up. Take our contrast down a little bit. Black's down to add some pop. And then we're going to brush on these really high highlight areas. Bring the highlights down and the contrast down. Darken the whole image. And brighten up our groom's face here a little bit. Before, after. Probably took it too far, so let's just dial that back. Okay, somewhere around there. I kind of have several like this already, so I'm just going to do black and white for one. Just to give it some variety. And we're going to take the shadows up in these radio filters. We just don't lose everything. Just gonna slightly whiten his teeth here. shot I'm just evening out the light starting with that dress which is way too bright and then these super bright spots on their skin darken it all down and then the areas that need more brightness now we can add a little bit Or after.
needing that other preset again. Good. So now I'm going to brush over all of their faces in a really rough way, like that, before, after. And I can add a little bit of contrast overall. Dial back our highlights even more. Somewhere around there. And then take our blacks up. Before, after. I might have taken that slightly too far, so we'll just back it off. If you're wondering if you've gone too far, you probably have. I'm actually going to go in, erase this mask just around his jawline. And I'll accentuate that jaw a little bit before, after. This one I don't actually like as much because their lips are touching. See how that almost kiss has a lot more passion to it than holding the kiss? But we'll give him this one as well, just do it in black and white. And again, brighten up his face right up here. Okay, so you can see that the sky was still blown out. So I'm going to take my highlights and intentionally bring them up and clip it all the way. And probably put this in black and white. Yeah.
Okay, now here's my favorite part of the day, just because the colors were so beautiful. Oops, did not mean to do that. Take our exposure up. Honestly, this shot, not very great. There's a house in the back, a pole in the back, kind of distracting. Exposure's all over the place. She's smiling, kind of everybody else is like, eh. So I think I'm going to delete this one. This, they're having fun, which is great. funny it really depends on the wedding but I feel like even though this one was overcast so in some ways the lighting is easier I'm doing so much more brushing on these photos than on certain other weddings all just varies day by day okay so I could brighten this whole photo up and just leave it like that but I think it's actually gonna be better if I keep it dark to have that background nice and dark and then attempt to just brush on them Bring the contrast down and the highlights down. Shadows up a little bit. Then do a couple of radial filters. One, two, three. Something like that. Wait for it. Okay, somewhere around there. Here's before and here's after. So it's still too bright and too contrasty. So we could try taking our color profile down a little bit and our contrast down a little bit. Till we find a nice blend. I think that's okay. Another way to do it, of course, would have just been to brighten everything up, do a quick brush on the background and darken the background down. Probably that's what I should have done, but now you know how not to do it. Okay. Now for whatever reason, the way that they're standing in this photo makes them just appear large. Like they're not large people at all. It's just something about the angle and the way that they're spaced together. I really should have gotten the bride facing this way. And then that way her profile would have just not been made larger by the dress. Like that's really what's going on. It's just the way the dress is sitting and the way the flowers are sitting you can't see her waist which is actually like right here so I think I'm gonna get rid of this one because it's just not that flattering and that's something that you should notice Ryan during the actual photo shoot because now I've got these photos that I was so stoked on but I don't know they're just kind of not what they could have been now one thing we could possibly play around with is the transform a little bit and then vignetting, or not vignetting, wait for it. The lens corrections and distortions. We could add some distortion this way just to counteract my bad posing job. So here's before and after, I think. Manual constraint crop. There we go. Before, after. And that feels better, and that feels more natural anyways. I'm not trying to make them look any different than they actually look. It's just that my camera angle posing didn't happen to put them in the best possible light. Love it. How pretty are those colors? Like, ugh, I can't even.
Now we could venture into the tone curve, add a little bit of contrast by raising up our highlights like that, and then dial back our highlights here, bring up our blacks, before, after. Make sure we turn off our guided transform, and reset our crop. Nice. Uh, I feel like I have lots of photos of the bride and I don't really love this particular shot, pose, whatever. I'm going to delete that one. Love this more real moment, so I'm going to keep that for sure. Contrast down, exposure up a little bit. And then just on her forehead, take the texture and curvy down a bit. Good. That would also look great in black and white. I think this one will do black and white. Perfect. Whoops. Okay. Uh, I don't really love this shot. I think we can get rid of it. This one, are they in focus? They look kind of... Kind of like they're not. Might do that, but in black and white. A really big radio filter. And do a very subtle change here. And now I'm going to duplicate that. Make the filter smaller. More focused. And up on this hillside where things look a little too shadowy, I'm just going to have to fix that. Love that. Beauty. Warm it up just a bit. And unfortunately, it looks like we're out of focus, doesn't it? So we'll bring our texture up a little. It's not out of focus. It's just that particular camera. It's a little softer. That looks good. We're just going to brighten up Groom's face here a little. Good. This I love. So one radio filter like that, and then I think I'm going to do the brooding dehaze effect here. Let's 
dial it back so it's not so extreme, just really subtle. That's before, and that's after. I'm thinking this other radio filter is too strong as well, so I'll dial it back. Go in with a brush. Something like that. Before. Apre. Now we could crop it. Maybe do a 5 by 7 instead. Just something slightly narrower. Here's before. Here's after. I don't know. I think so. This one looks great, but I think it'll look even better by adding just a little bit more pop to the background. So we're going to do a really rough brush, add some contrast. Super rough. The nice part is, since it's a pretty subtle effect, you're not really going to see it that much. Before or after. the same thing once more. Oh my gosh, this whole time was I cropping out? No. Fortunate. Good. Dial back on that texture. And this roadway here is the brightest part of the image, ironically. It's going to distract from our overall photo, so we're just going to darken it down. 
We can even take the texture and the clarity down a bit. Good. Before, not pretty. Now, both of these beautiful people are a little bit vertically short. <laughs> so we're just going to grab our transform tool. We're going to go like this and then constrain the crop. And that's just going to change things. I really should have gotten down with my camera and shot up a little bit more and that would have made them appear taller. But this is just a quick fix if you happen to shoot from above and you're just making people look shorter than they actually are. Because neither of them are that short. See how much more effective the composition is when that roadway is darker versus this? Let's make sure they're in focus. They look almost a little dull. Nope, things are sharp. That's good. Beauty.
Just a couple more left here, and then we are all done. So with this particular wedding, the bride and groom, due to COVID, had to last minute cut their guest list, cancel the reception, all that good stuff. And so there's no reception for this one other than the kind of canapes that they served earlier with their friends and family. So then we headed out for some photos, which you're seeing now. And after that, they ordered in pizza. And so they didn't need any more photos of that. So if you're wondering, where are the speeches? Where are the dances? Well, it's cut short. Okay, what do you think? Kind of like this, a little bit more moody and mysterious. And then we'll just brighten up her face a little bit before, after. I think that's really nice. I'm not sure I love that expression. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say I don't like it at all. So I'm going to get rid of that. This time, rather than taking contrast away from her face, I'm actually adding it, just so that it pops a little bit more. And it's the brightest, most eye-catching part of the photo. And then lastly, we'll just go over her skin really quick. Clean it up very slightly. Before, after, maybe darken it down a tad, raise the blacks up. Okay, so first off, I'm going to add some pop to these eyes. Like that. Then we're going to soften her skin everywhere else. And I'll frame in her face by adding a little bit more texture into her hair. And some saturation. Darken everything down. Before, after. And lastly, maybe let's just sharpen up that little hair piece. Okay. Now we could maybe brighten her eyes a little bit more. Just a bit. That might have been too far. And by might, I mean it was too far. You don't want the eyes to look like they're glowing. Easiest way to do it, zoom out. And if it looks unnatural, then you've gone too far. Okay, so I love the colors in this photo. She's not in focus. The flowers are. And her expression is kind of like mid saying something. So I could try just adding some shadows here. Underneath her chin. Right, so there's before and after. Obviously that's way too much, but you get the point. I could do something like that. But she's still out of focus, so... Probably what we'd want to do then is make this a flower shot, maybe. Go down to our dehaze darken brush. Try that out. OK, 
Okay, obviously that looks really weird. <laughs> it was worth a shot. Another thing we could try, just add a little bit of texture to her face, a little bit of sharpness. And then kind of do the opposite on her flowers because they're really sharp by comparison. Take the texture down a little, clarity down a little, and darken them. Okay, now colors are good. You can still tell that she's not super in focus. I'm gonna put in black and white. That should solve all our problems. Bravo, Ryan, bravo. Okay, a couple more. Mm, this one, honestly, I don't love the framing. I'm gonna get rid of it. This one I'm gonna crop in like that. And just sharpen on her eyes. And some on the lips as well. Again, not a huge fan of this one. This one I like, but I think it'll be much better in black and white. Again, just balancing out the light by brightening up the parts we want the focus to be on. Darkening down those flowers.
And there, my friends, you have it from beginning to end. We are all edited. These previews just haven't shown up yet. Now, before I do my final export, I'm just going to go through them one more time and see if there's anything I missed. So just give them a quick once over. So the way I like to do this is actually in the library module as opposed to the develop module because I can scroll through really quick. And if things stand out, then I'll just adjust them as I need to. So let's back up here and just do a quick little scroll. If things look like they need an adjustment, I hit the D key. And we're just going to brighten up his face. Like that. And back we go. Hello. You can see how much faster I can go through because I'm in the grid view slash the library module. This isn't grid view. <laughs> okay, this one needs a little bit more focus on the middle. Just brighten it up a little bit. Okay, that was that was too much a bit. Like that. This one's crooked. This one could use some more color. I like it much better when there's nothing to adjust. Just saying. Now the thing is, I actually, you can't tell because it seems like I've just been recording straight through, but I did stop last night at sunset and then started again this morning in between recording this. So the reason that a lot of these are slightly too dark is probably because I was editing them at night when the screen was really, really bright. So it just appeared brighter than it was. Now that I'm editing during the day, it's going to be the opposite and I'm going to tend to make things a little bit brighter than maybe even they should be. So just something to be aware of when you're editing. The time of day makes a massive difference. And I generally try not to edit at night at all, um, simply because when you edit at night, not only are you going to make things too bright, but you're also going to lose track of what proper white balance looks like. And your colors just aren't going to be as accurate.
Also, side note, if anyone knows the key, the keyboard shortcut to get from develop module to loop view like this, please let me know. Because right now, I just have to go back to the grid view every time and then double click on the grid and it's super annoying. And I'm sure it's out there. I just don't have it. In hindsight, I don't really love them feeling so far over to the side, so I'm going to fix that crop. These look too blue. Also a little, and by a little I mean a lot too contrasty. I think I'm going to get rid of this one. I don't really like it so much. What happened here? There we go. Lightroom is struggling.
Honestly, I just don't like this photo at all. <laughs> so we're going to get rid of that one. So this one, I'm going to take the saturation down so the skin is kind of where I want it in terms of saturation, which is around there. Then I'm going to take my vibrance up to add color in the greens and the yellows and the blues. Somewhere around there. Okay, now that we've done that second pass, ready to export. So my export settings these days are to go into that folder of the wedding couple. I make a new folder called exports. I'm going to choose that. You can see I already exported them once before I decided, no, I'm going to give it one more pass. That's why I am here with you now. I'm going to go to rename and uncheck it. And the reason for that is I actually want to keep the original file name so that if I ever have to reference it and the bride comes back and says, hey, this photo here, can you adjust something? I know what the file name is and it's really easy for me to find it. It's really annoying if you rename all the photos and then you have to like visually match them up. Resize to fit. 
I set that to off. I want full resolution quality at 85. I found that's a nice compromise between really large files and also really high quality. You don't really lose much quality when you go down a little bit. You save a lot of space for backups and stuff, and it's a lot faster to upload. Then lastly, output sharpening set to sharpen for matte paper. We're going to set that to export and overwrite those photos. And once they're exported, I will show you my final process in uploading them for my clients and delivering them online. All right, so those exports are finished in total. I think I was editing for about four and a half hours. It's a little bit longer than normal, but I was also talking and kind of walking you through things. Took my time, made sure I did a great job. Now, let's grab these exports. We're going to head over to Google Chrome. And the way I deliver my photos is with Pixie Set. Now, I love Pixie Set because it's easy and it's beautiful and it really improves the client experience. So if you want to sign up below, you can host, I think, a free wedding or at least a couple of free sessions before they make you pay for an account. So you can sign up. I'll leave a link below. And if you do, you'll get a little bit of extra storage using that link or you can just sign up separately. I don't really care. Not much in it for me. I think they give me like a $5 credit towards my account. That's it. Anyways, we're going to head over to Client Gallery. I'm going to make a new collection. We're going to call it to whatever the couple's name is, which in this case is Annalise and Brendan. But let's do that the other way around. Okay. Date of the wedding. We'll put in the 18th. I think it was the 18th. It was the 17th. Okay, and then I've got a pre-made setting here called weddings. And then that will actually save your settings every time. So you can see I've got all of these folders for the different parts of the day. And then I can grab my photos. Now upload them into here. And from there, I can just sort them. Oh, that didn't work so well. Let's try this again. There we go. So Pixie Set will let me actually organize these by capture date. So I don't need to worry about them being in alphabetical order or anything like that. And then I'm just going to drag each of these photos once they're uploaded into their corresponding sections. And then I will have a nice gallery to send my clients. So let me just show you that rather than making you wait. I'm going to go over to my dashboard and show you a gallery from a recent wedding that I did for Charlie and Nikki. This is what the client side looks like. So they get some nice instructions on how to download, how to pick favorites, and they can actually order prints right from within their gallery, which is really great. So you can see that here's the groom preps. If they want to view more, it takes them into the bride preps, that kind of thing. So it gives them a really seamless experience. It looks great on desktop and laptop and iPad and iPhone, whatever device you're using, it looks great on, which is good. And then once in a while, clients will actually order some prints and then I get some extra cash that way. I don't really push it. That's just me. Um, one hot tip you can use that I've seen other people use is give them an incentive to buy prints right away. Because if people wait to buy prints, generally they don't do it at all. They'll just download these, take them to London Drugs and get something for cheaper. Whereas if you give them an incentive, so hey guys, for the first two days that this gallery is live, I have a special discount for you. It's $500 off of album packages or whatever it is. And then you give them an incentive to move quickly, then you can actually get a lot more print sales. But personally, I'm not super into working with prints, so I just leave it at that. And I send the clients a message once their gallery is finished using this share button. I'll enter their email, whatever that email has to be, happens to be. Enter the subject. That's normally mine. And then the cool part is you can actually save email templates. So here's my wedding delivery template. And it's a pre-made template. So I can just go ahead, hit send invite. It'll send it to their emails and we're good to go. Or if you want to send a direct link or share it on Facebook, you can do that too. So that's Pixie Set. And that's how I go about doing that whole thing. It's all very easy and quick and simple, which is great. I'm not going to bore you with the details. You can picture me clicking and dragging these into the different folders. <laughs> and that's really all there is to it. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If it was, can you do me a big favor? Can you hit the like button? Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below. And if you have any tips, advice, thoughts, I would love to hear them. Let's have a conversation. We're better together. All right. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.